Tonight I'm speaking to James Fleming, a former miner who suffered devastating injuries when seven and a half tons collapsed on top of him in a mining disaster whilst he was working at the coalface. James was left with devastating injuries, assessed at 80% disability, but nonetheless had his benefit taken away from him. This is James's story. I'm James Fleming. I worked at Rosington Colliery for eight, nine years. I had a serious uh, accident on the coal face, which resulted in me breaking my back. I've been to two appeals and lost both of them, even though I had uh, an 80% disability. The, the judge, Judge Bovitt, said that I could be a car park attendant, which I find quite hilarious, really, uh, with an 80% disability. Who would insure me? That's just one question I'd asked. But they just reply, it's not our problem. Other, other things that come to mind, PIP, personal independent payment, are they gonna hit me with that next? Uh, I did get industrial injuries, but you would do with an 80% disability. As far as employment's concerned, I, I personally don't think anybody would ever employ me as for the nature of my injury, a, a broken back. I don't, uh, I don't ask for a lot, I just want what's legally mine and uh, just want to carry on. 17th of July 86, uh, that's when I had my accident. I was paralysed for two and a half to three months but was in hospital four and a half month at uh, hospital in Sheffield Lodge Moor. 10 metres, 20 metres, I don't count. I just go until my legs seize up. I have more falls than anything. I've broke both my wrists, broke my nose. I, I couldn't see myself being a car park attendant for numerous reasons. One would be the distance. How would I get to the job? Two, like Judge Bovitt said, in a wheelchair, are they going to park so that a wheelchair can go up and down them without scratching them? There's lots of silly things when you look back on it, what he said. I had the union man with me, uh, John Gibson from Rosington, and uh, I think he was more shocked than what I was. But that was his first ever tribunal he'd been to. But I was quite shocked when they did say that they were stopping your disability. But but now I look I look back and I just think it's not just me, is it? It's it's numerous people. People are a lot worse off than me. And I mean a lot worse off than me. The doctor really never said anything. It was mainly the judge uh, Judge Bovitt. He had all the questions, all the answers. Asking me numerous questions. He he actually said that I uh, had I walked the seven, 75 yards from the electric gate. I said no. The the taxi that I went in brought me to the reception area. Life's a lot harder since I broke my back, and as I've got older, it's got worse. Me a spinal injury don't get any better. If anybody with a spinal injury had said exactly the same, you're, uh, you're injured for life. I lost around £86 a week. Well, I've seen a copy of the Appeal Tribunal decision, and quite extraordinarily, one of the reasons that James lost his benefit is because the tribunal found that he could use his wheelchair for up to five minutes at a time, at which point he was able to travel at the same speed as someone that wasn't disabled. Well, that's crazy. What happens after the five minutes is up? James lost £86 per week because of this bonkers decision and two appeals were unable to reinstate it. What kind of a modern benefit system is that, Mr Ian Duncan-Smith? 